live from Allegiant Stadium in Las Vegas for day one of Big 12 football media days. The biggest storyline surrounding the expanded Big 12, pending conference changes, and which teams could surprise everyone in the Big 12 this season. Plus, we'll sit down with players and coaches from across the Big 12, including Oklahoma State's head coach Mike Gunny and star running back Ollie Gordon. Welcome to BYU Sports Station, presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Happy Tuesday, July 9th. We are live in Las Vegas at the home of the Las Vegas Raiders, Allegiant Stadium. It is Big 12 Football Media Days. I am Spencer Linton alongside a man who knows a thing or two about playing in an NFL venue. He is former NFL and BYU wide receiver great Austin Colley. How about this venue? It's pretty spectacular, to say the least. I mean, first time here at Big 12 Media Days. I mean, couldn't get any better. What a better venue. And the setup, no less. We have been uh, moved from a locker room last year at uh, the Cowboys Stadium to just center field, Austin. So there's no hiding. Yeah, it's a little <laughs> awkward. <laughs> right? I mean, everything we're saying is just out here for, in the open, right? Exposed. <laughs> Got to be on your game. Uh, we're, you're, you're, you've done this before, though. Okay, just channel your former football player who's played in front of hundreds of thousands of fans. Now, you just, now it's just your words, right? Yeah, a little different. <laughs> <laughs> a little different. Oh, the way we love it. Uh, great to have you with us. Uh, no, it's great to be here, man. I'm excited. Our coverage. Okay, uh, as Austin just mentioned, we have a loaded show, including an interview with the head coach of Oklahoma State, Mike Gundy. You'll hear from his star running back, Ollie Gordon II, among other things discussed. And Austin, just to begin, before we have Coach join us, I'm interested to get your thoughts on... Year two of the Big 12 in general, as it pertains to BYU, the Cougars have gone through it one time. They've experienced Power 5 football in a full season and all of the context that goes along with it. So what do you expect BYU to do differently as they make the leap from year one to year two and try and get ready and, and get back to a bowl game, I should say? Yeah, I, I, I think the expectation is a little bit different, right? I think coming into a new conference, especially a Power 5 conference like the Big 12, uh, you know, you, you really can't get a sense of what the, the difference in competition is until you've actually played that competition, right? And I think now BYU has an idea of what, what to expect. Um, you know, the, the, the guys are bigger. They're a little bit faster, a little bit more athletic. Um, and, and, and you didn't get a sense of how your team stacks up against them and then identify, being able to identify their weaknesses, strengths, right, going into that second season. I think there's, there's uh, yeah, it, you, you definitely go in with a little bit more confidence in knowing what, what, you know, the road ahead is like. One of the other things that we'll be discussing today is who could be this year's West Virginia? Because if you'll remember, the Mountaineers were picked to finish dead last, 14th out of 14 teams. Of course, the conference has expanded to 16 now, but West Virginia was a much better football team than they were projected to be, Austin. Their head coach, Neil Brown, took straight up offense to it and said, you'll see when the games start to happen. They were a top five team at the end of the Big 12 season. So who's maybe that team that's in the bottom half or the bottom fourth that could be the team like West Virginia last year that surprises people? I mean, no bias here at all, right? But I, I, I do think it's the Cougs, right? I do think it's BYU. I think, um, you know, we have the pieces of the puzzle now. Like I said, I, I think all around from the skill positions, we have more confidence going into the season, knowing what to expect, knowing the competition that they're going to be going up against every single week. Um, you know, you look at guys in the wide receiving room, right? I think that last year, uh, that, that was a big area that, that BYU's talent kind of had to drop off in not having guys healthy, having guys in and out of each, uh, you know, each game, but now having a, a, an entire unit there that have been together, that have been in the system. We had transfers coming in last year from a variety of different places that are potentially going to be huge playmakers for us this, this year and going to be a lot more comfortable. So, yeah, I think BYU's definitely in that discussion, in that mix. Hey, we've got a, See, this a, is what I'm talking a about, surprise right? guest. This is what I'm talking about. Year. How are we doing? <laughs> Just mascots walking around doing whatever they want. To the Red Raiders here. And now we welcome in our first guest, uh, as a matter of fact. Uh, instead of the head coach, Mike Gundy, we're going to welcome in Arguably the best running back in all of college football. 
in fact, by awards stands, uh, it, he is the greatest running back in college football right now. Ollie Gordon, the second of Oklahoma State. Ollie, welcome to BYU Sports Nation and Big 12 Media Day. How y'all doing? How y'all doing? We're doing great. How do you think about, or what do you think the setup here at Allegiant Stadium? We'll begin with that. Uh, I think it's pretty, it looks pretty good. You know, it's pretty elite um, seeing all the teams here. Well, not all the teams, but all the mascots and all the, just the two teams, everybody here. You know, I feel like it's really, it's really beautiful out here in the great stadium. I love that. Ollie, quick question. I want to get right into it, okay? What's, um, you know, I, I, having played football myself, you know, having had a decision to come out early, I, I, I'm very curious as to to know what went into your decision to come back, right? You came off of a phenomenal year, arguably could have been one of the first running backs, if not the first running back off the board in last year's NFL draft. What is what got you back here and take me through that process of making that decision. Oh, well, you know, a couple of things kind of played in the part to that. Um, technically, last year was just my second year out of high school, so I wasn't I wasn't uh, available for draft yet. Okay. I wasn't eligible. So, um, and then again, I was just going through everything, going through the seasons I've been here, and I just feel like Oklahoma State is home to me, you know. Like, um, I feel like they value me more as a person. My teammates and my coaches, you know, they don't just look at us, look at us as players. They actually care for us, and, you know, I feel like if I was a transfer or go somewhere else, they would just care for me as a player and not yeah. as a person, you know? Gotcha. gotcha. Yeah, the, the transfer portal is such a prominent part of, of college sports, and you just brought it up. But what is it about the the camaraderie and the chemistry of Oklahoma State that sets it apart from other programs, in your opinion? Uh, you know, like I said, ever since I've been talking to Oklahoma State, you know, they just treated me like, you know, they've been knowing me forever, like I was family. You know, uh, when I first got on the campus, uh, the players, they took me in as their little brother, and, you know, they showed me the ways, and, as I just grew with them, I learned the, the cowboy culture, and it just got better and better from then on. So now I feel like I got to pass that down to my little brothers now that's here, you know, coming in as freshmen, like how the older cl- upperclassmen did me. I need to compliment you because it's it's not always easy to go through a tough experience like you have recently, but then you're in front of it. And you could have very well said, like, now I'm going to pass on media days, and I, and I don't want to do that, but you put out a really, really well-versed statement yesterday, and uh, and. Uh, as you go through these tough times, what has this process taught you uh, about those challenges and how do you expect it to, to shape your future? Yeah, you know, uh, you really just got to, you know, watch the decisions you make, honestly. Uh, you know, one decision you can make could be the last one you make and it could be bad for you. but Or you could, you know, learn from your mistakes and prevent it from happening deeper into the future, you know. So, you know, I'll tell you like that. And plus, I didn't want to leave my teammates and my coaches out here for them to answer all the questions when I could be here to do it. You know, that wouldn't be very you know, responsible to me. Very mature of you, right? Uh, being able to do that, being able to kind of come out in front of it, uh, admit to the, the mistakes. Everyone's got them, right? Uh, play with a ton of athletes or a ton of players or teammates that have uh, had a similar mistake, right? Uh, and being able to handle that like, man, maybe that's why I mistake you as, as being such an older, as a senior or, or, or junior, <laughs> right? Um, uh, talk to me about Coach Gundy, right? Like one of the things I love about Coach Gundy is, is at least from the outside looking in, he seems to be a coach that's always bringing that fire and always wanting to cultivate that team culture. What are some of the things that you guys have done this off season in, in order to carry that momentum from last year and such a successful season into this year? Uh, you know, actually, Coach Gundy. I mean, I could just sit here and just like you know he's a great guy, but I mean, honestly, he is everybody already knows that. Um, the thing that stands out about Coach Gundy is last year he took us probably around the third game, and, you know, he just showed us a bunch of clips of teams before, like pre prior teams of Oklahoma State, you know, warming up, getting ready, and how hyped they were after games, you know, when their teammate make plays. And he was just saying, like, we need to get back to the culture of Oklahoma State Cowboys, you know. Uh, right any, now, clips, any clips of him? Any clips of him in that mix uh, of the highlights <laughs> shown to the team? <laughs> uh, it's a, you know, you might see Coach Gundy and the Dougie a couple videos or something, you know. But, yeah, he just told us that we need to bring back the Cowboy culture, basically back to the locker room. And, you know, another thing I love about him is, like, he doesn't get involved in the locker room. You know, he lets us – he said he tells us it's our locker room. Like, it's his team, yeah. but he tells us it's our team also, you know. So I feel like he uh, he's shaping us for the real world – real world experiences, experiences, and he's preparing us, honestly, and I really appreciate him. He's a great guy. You know, he always – checks on us, make sure asks us how we're doing in team meetings. You know, he'll take his time to get one-on-one with all of us, and, you know, he's just a great guy. Yeah, he, he, he's, he's fiery, man. I love his energy. He's got fantastic care, to say the least. That That is for sure. Ollie Gordon II is with us on BYU Sports Nation. I mean, you mentioned that turnaround last year, Ollie, where things were – I mean, it was a rough start to the season. Then all of a sudden Oklahoma State is peaking and you're playing in the Big 12 championship game. 
You're picked to finish third this year. How do you manage expectations coming off a year where you were in the championship game and then you get picked to finish third? I mean, you know, really, as um, long as we just stay true to each other, we don't really pay attention to the outside noise, I feel like we'll be fine. As long as, you know, uh, me and my teammates know we got each other and know that we have each other's back regardless of what goes on, I feel like we'll be fine. Um you know, it's kind of funny that they pick us to finish third, but I feel like I'm cool with being the underdog. You know, I feel like as long as we're the underdog, we play better. I think every BYU fan wants to know what the heck happened at halftime in Stillwater as well because BYU was in a good position, and then you scored five touchdowns, Ollie. What changed at halftime that allowed you to win that game and eventually get to the Big 12 title? You know, it was really just us going in and realizing what we had at stake. You know, if we would have lost that game, oh, you go to the Big 12 championship, and we would not want little bro to go to the <laughs> Big 12 championship. for their last year being in it. You know, so um, I just feel like – we went into halftime and we locked in with each other. You know, uh, when I say like Gundy gives us the gives us the leadership to where it's our team. You know, I want to talk to the defense. You got Nick Martin, Colin Oliver coming over to talk to me. All our great defensive leaders coming to talk to me. You got me and Allen going to talk to everybody. Just going to talk to everybody. And I'm just telling you about everybody. I'm like, bro, this not this not about to be our last game. You know, we got so much potential on this team. Why would why would we just you know lay down and give up? So we all locked in together and we got it right. Have you noticed a, a difference in you, – you mentioned Alan. Have you noticed a difference in his demeanor as, as being now this, you know, going into his second year as a starter? I mean, the first year for any starter, let alone the QB position, is a little bit you know, nerve-wracking. There's some things that you need to get used to. He probably needs to get settled in a, a little bit. But I've always seen an improvement from the year one to year two. Have you noticed a change in his demeanor in the locker room and in the weight room and the off-season schedule? Uh, you can just tell with Allen that, like, you know, he's been around college football for a long time. You know, he just – he took year one, you know, to adapt to the team, learn how, how we were. And as year two comes on, he's stepping up more. You know, he's doing more things, giving more of that cowboy culture than he was before, you know. And that's just because he was new to the program last year. But he, he's done a great job adapting, you know. Um, everybody loves him. He's a great guy, very responsible, uh, definitely a guy you want leading your team, you know. How, how old were you when he began college football in 2018? 2018, I would have been, what uh, – 14. <laughs> I was 14 in 2018. Really? I was born. No, wait, in 2014? I was 10. 2018. Oh, 2018. Yeah, I was 14. Right. Yeah, you're 14. 20, yeah, yeah. 2018, I was 14. So 14. you were all of 14 years old Jeez. when your quarterback began his college football career. It's funny that you say that because every time you bring it up, you know, every time I see him, I'm like, Papa, come here. <laughs> um, come here, Uncle. Come here. <laughs> but, yeah, that, that's crazy to think about, honestly. We talked about it the other day. I think when he graduated high school, I was a freshman in high school. That's that, that's, 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 that's like that, that's the likes of BYU right there. Yeah, that, yeah. Right? That sounds like when, the BYU when Taysom roster. Hill was 26 and starting right? BYU. He can certainly appreciate that. Uh, Ollie, I, I got to ask you about with the EA Sports setup behind us. Hey, what's your what's your rating in the new college football game? What would you put it as? And don't, and don't go humble on us. As either, the reigning, right? don't go you're humble. the reigning best running back in college football. If y'all want me to be real with y'all, I'm be 100% with y'all. I feel like, you know, I'm going to say one number and the, the second number behind the match. I feel like my rating should be a nine. So I'm going to let you figure that one out. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fantastic. Hey, we'll finish with this. How are you a different running back right now compared to where you were at this time last year? Uh, this time last year, I was still, you know, adapting on trying to be a leader. You know, um, I feel like with what I just had this past season and going into it, I feel like I'm a better leader and I'm a more confident runner. Like, you know, now I get the, get the ball hit it down hole. I mean, hit it downhill and I'll be fine with it. You know, last year at this time, I was a timid running back. I was like, ah, oh, do I want to make that cut? Ah, oh, do I want to do this? So I just feel like Last year you were then. timid. No, 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 no. The year like, yeah, prior. Year before the season. Okay. Around this time last year. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was timid. But now I feel like as I went through that spring ball, that fall camp, you know, going against the Nick Martins, the Colin Olivers, you know, you can't be timid. It's, it's going to get bad for you, you know what I'm saying, in between them tackles. So uh, I feel like they've helped, they've bettered me as a running back and a person, you know, so I appreciate that. Out, outstanding. Oh, I actually have a friend who is a diehard Oklahoma State fan and said you cannot let Ollie get off the desk without asking, like, one, do you feel 100%? And do you expect that everything you've gone through, do you, do you fully anticipate that you'll be available for every game and all of fall camp and everything moving forward? Uh, do I feel 100% right now? Yeah, you know, I do. We can play a game tomorrow. I'll be ready. But, um, you know, speaking on that, I really, you know, hey, actions deserve consequences, you know, and whatever Coach Gundy decides, I'm behind him 100%, honestly. All your class act. Class hey, act, we, man. We appreciate you being with us. We're hoping that you get that. Nine, nine, <laughs> as as well. 
and uh, wish you the best luck moving forward. Yes, sir. Thank you. You got it. All right, brother. Ollie Gordon, the second. BYU Sports Days. That's the best running back in college football, ladies and gentlemen. (laughs) Uh, BYU fans know it all too well. All right, our question of the day. What are you looking forward to the most about Big 12 football media days? If it wasn't an interview with one of the great players in all of college football, maybe it's something else. Hashtag BYUSN on X, Facebook, and Instagram to join that conversation. Austin, what are you looking forward to most about the uh, remainder of Big 12 media days? I don't know. We started off pretty, you know, started off strong with Ollie. I mean, absolute stud. Um, you know, kudos to him for, for being able to come in here and, and, and speak to, uh, you know, some of the past few days. But, um, you know, I, I'm excited to talk to Mike. I'm excited to talk to, you know, Coach Prime. I'm excited to coach, you know, talk to Coach Winningham. Cam Rising, maybe reminisce about some good old Utah BYU days, <laughs> right? Sixteen team conference. I, I know that it's been that way for a, a minute, but like now it feels official. Right? Yeah, and now it feels official because we're at media days. It's uh, it's just right around the corner. But guess what? Tune in tomorrow for more coverage live from Big Twelve football media days at Allegiant Stadium tomorrow at noon Eastern on BYU TV and BYU Radio. Up next, our coverage from Las Vegas and the. Expansive Big 12 Media Days two-day event continues with Oklahoma State quarterback Alan Bowman. Pop, pop, as Ollie Gordon II just called him, is on the desk next. This is BYU Sports Nation. Gordon straight ahead, plows in the end zone. And Oklahoma State flexing at the end of the half, another touchdown. We are live at Allegiant Stadium, Big 12 Media Days from Las Vegas. This is your day-to-day BYU Sports play-by-play. I'm Spencer Linton, teamed up with former NFL and BYU wide receiver Austin Colley. You just saw highlights from Oklahoma State's dynamic duo, Ollie Gordon II. Just spoke with him, had a great conversation with him. Now it's time for the Cowboys quarterback, Alan Bowman, to make his media day debut on BYUSN. Alan, welcome to BYU Sports Nation. Yeah, glad to be here. First time in Vegas. First time in Vegas. Which is pretty wild, man. Being 24, you know, <laughs> the 21st birthday type thing. But, yeah, first time here. It's crazy. Okay, you were just telling us during the break, uh, you got to see the Bellagio Fountains. But you couldn't get anybody to go see a magic show with you. I know. I Who doesn't to... want to go see David Copperfield? I know. I'm a big magic guy. I was all like the America's Got Talent, all the magic shows gets yes. me going. But uh, it was a little late, you know, after dinner. So I had to get had to get uh, rested up and look pretty for you guys. <laughs> well, the mustache is looking you healthy. like that? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. How long, Phenomenal. out of curiosity, how long does it take you to do that? Uh, I have been growing out some facial hair for, try, try, I've just been able to for about a year. And I said, you know what, let's try to do something different. I've never had a mustache in my life until yeah. yesterday. <laughs> I, I got my hair cut. And we're like, you know what, let's do it. So, so one of the questions I asked Ollie in the, the previous uh, little segment was the, the demeanor of Alan from year one to year two and the confidence from year one to year two. How has that changed? And I think that some, it's, it's summed up on his face right now. Yeah. Right? I mean, Absolutely. Your, your confidence has to be at a 10 to be rocking that stash right now. Absolutely. Well, Pistol Pete, right? Oklahoma State Cowboys, I feel like it just fits right in. It's orange, it's, right? It's That's phenomenal. my hair. So, <laughs> But to get back to year one to year two, right? I think learning a new offense, it was like my fifth offense in six years. Yeah. So it's been able really good to be able to put two years back to back with an offense and get more comfortable with it. Being able to look back at a full season of tape and say, hey, we need to get better at this and then have the time to get better at it. So that's why I'm excited for this year. Yeah, it's been a, a, a journey for you Absolutely. through college football. It started at Texas Tech in mm-hmm. 2018, and now here we are going into the 2024 season. So, I mean, you are a true veteran. For those that don't know your journey, how did it start in Lubbock and end up where you are in Stillwater? Yeah, originally from the Grapevine, Texas, Dallas area. Um, out of high school, went to Texas Tech, graduated there in three years. Uh, felt as if some things didn't go the right way, and, and I wanted to – I could play at the highest level. And so Coach Harbaugh and and Michigan came along, and I thought that I can compete with the best of them. Ended up going up there and and falling up a little short at the job, Um, obviously behind great players like J.J. McCarthy's top 10 pick and uh, Cade McNamara, who's at Iowa now. So And then um, Dan Valari, who's a tight end at at Syracuse. So those are the four top four guys are all playing in the the NFL or or college now. So to be able to win two big Big Ten championships – back-to-back college football playoffs and just see what first-round draft picks look like and what championship football looks like. was able to good to take the lessons and playing time that I had at Texas Tech and then the championship culture at Michigan and then to come back closer to home, the Dallas area, and then with Coach Gundy and Oklahoma State kind of put it all together. So uh, throughout that time, 
I imagine you're you're grabbing just nuggets everywhere, oh my right? Gosh. Yeah, I mean, is that even though I didn't play much on the field, I feel like I gained so much knowledge as, in football at Texas Tech. It was throw it 60 times a game, air raid offense. And then I show up in Ann Arbor, and they're like, all right, now take a seven-step under center reverse play action drop. <laughs> Check the call and third and down. Or we're a little different. Fronts. Right. So I, I had two left feet. And it, under, it makes me understand why the Pat Mahomes needed a year or two in the NFL to understand how it works. So I think it's at least an advantage for me at the next level where now I didn't run an entire NFL offense, but at least I've had a taste of going under center and looking at guys in the huddle and stuff like that. Does it get awkward at all, passing Texas Tech or, or, or any of the same coaches? Still it there? was cool. No, not the same coaches, but Kirby Holcutt, the athletic director, and Matt Dowdy, one of the uh, communication guys. It was just good to see them. I haven't seen them in three, four years. So it, a little weird. Um, I wish we did play in Lubbock this year because that would have been pretty cool to go back into the old stadium and play. But they, uh, they're coming to Stillwater on senior night. So I, got a, I mean, I probably have... 50 people that would be coming to that one. Oklahoma State quarterback Alan Bowman is with us on BYU Sports Nation. You beat BYU in a dramatic rally in the final mm-hmm. game of the regular season to get to the Big 12 championship. Obviously, you lose to Texas there, but it was after a rough start for Oklahoma State, it was uh, about as good of a result you could have yeah. hoped for. I mean, so much improvement in the season. You're picked third this year. So how do you manage expectations of being a team that did play in the Big 12 title, conference expands, and now you're picked third? Yeah. The BYU game was a cra- one of the craziest games of my career, to be honest. <laughs> one of the, I think it was the biggest comeback we myself has ever had. So, I mean, I think there was a lot of pressure knowing that we had to win to go to the Big, 10, Big 12 championship game, and then you guys obviously had to win to make a bowl game. So as maybe some wasn't the biggest highlighted on the media to us and everyone in that stadium was a huge game. So I think there's a little more pressure in it. Um, and then kind of coming back to it was, was a resiliency to our team. And then for us to be seen in the Big 12, I think we have 20 returning starters. So I think picked third is whatever. I think it, it's, it's, it's what is picked at the end of the season, not what's picked in the beginning. So we can just take it for what it is and move on. So uh, – Nowadays, with the transfer portal, right, it's every single time it opens, we see a lot of action. Yes. Very little from Oklahoma State. What do you think that has? What do you attribute that to? What part does Coach Gundy play in that? What part does the locker room play in that? Because I think there is something to be said about, you know, uh, when it does open, if, there, if there's little to any activity coming from your school, that says a lot about the program mm-hmm. and the head coach, frankly. Absolutely. The culture that they've created at Oklahoma State's unbelievable. I've had the pleasure to be, he's my fourth head coach in college football, but the, the things that he's built and put in, it's 20, 20th year, 21st year, and so he basically has built a machine and gets to sit back and watch it. So he's like, he has the blueprints. This is what we do. This is how we win. This is what we who we are, and if you don't fit that, then you're most likely going to leave, but most of the guys that are there, and they do a great job in recruiting in and out of the portal, that no, nobody wants to leave, and especially this year, well, I said, hey, everybody has the opportunity to come back. We, we know what we can be. So we said, you know what, let's all do it. And kind of one guy said, I'm coming back. All he said he was coming back. All six O linemen said they're coming back. And I was like, well, I want to come back. <laughs> so at that point, that was just kind of like, hey, we got a really good thing going, and let's, and let's, not, uh, let's not mess with it. Let's talk about Ollie because – and we just uh, spoke with him and straight up complimented him for handling uh, almost an impossibly difficult situation. Yes. Like uh, he – He said, look, I made a mistake, but I did not want to leave my teammates and coach out there to answer all the questions for me. So he comes and answers. And when you're going through an arrest and a DUI, that that is not simple as a high-profile college athlete. So what have you seen from him, especially over the past couple of weeks, that, you know, maybe you didn't know before or maybe something that uh, has been revealed to you about his character in the past couple of weeks going through this? Definitely. I think him owning up to it. Kind of saying, you know what, I did make a mistake. I was in the wrong. A lot of guys are maybe in denial where it's like an excuse or no, that wasn't me or it was the somebody else's fault in a way. But for him to say, hey, you know what, this was on me. This is a snake that I made and I'm going to get better from it. And I'm going to show up and work even harder now to become an even better football player and a better teammate. Um, that's what he's been doing the past couple of days and past weeks. And we've all seen it. So I think we'll be able to move past it. Mm. Okay, so you played BYU in Provo this year. Yes, what are you looking forward to the most? Uh, high altitude? Yeah, not the is high it altitude. The scenery? I mean, not, not to get all. in your head at all. Yeah. But is it the scenery? <laughs> what, what, what is it? Yeah, I've never been to Utah, so I'm excited to go. It'll be my first time. First, A lot of firsts. Yeah. Did we get outside here. of Dallas at all when we were 
living in Dallas. I grew we up. We haven't at, been to Utah. We haven't I've, been to I've Vegas. I've been to a lot of places, though. I have, but those are two that I haven't. But I okay. did like to travel. I like to travel, really. I okay. do. Okay. Okay. So one of my good buddies has a house in Salt Lake and, and oh, has nice. that, like skis all the time. So they're all my friends are going to actually go up there. So at okay. some time, then we'll, I'll be I'll be in Utah, not not in a football uniform. But yeah, I'm excited. I've heard it's loud, loud and rowdy there. So the, the and we got the Friday night game on ESPN. Yeah. So I mean, it's going to be rocking. So and in the, the mountains and stuff, I can't wait. It's going to be a lot of fun. I mean, we get after it. Yeah, over there in Provo. <laughs> yeah, and right? was it Cosmo? Where's he at? Over here, and I'm flying yeah. and stuff like that, and the one arm push ups and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. the you, best mascot. You've recognized the, the great, the great Cosmo. Oh yeah, oh yeah, absolutely. But now you know, I can I can acknowledge it now. Because when I land in Pro or get in Provo, I'm not acknowledging <laughs> <Yes>. anything. <laughs> I have a job to do. Take care of it now. Absolutely. For sure. But, and yeah, for yeah. what it's worth, Pistol Pete's one of the most iconic yes. mascots yes. in all of college The biggest sports. head in college football. Everyone's at mascots have big heads. I don't think we, anyone beats that head. No. <laughs> it, weigh, it weighs so much. Yeah, it's plastic, too. Yeah. I talked to a couple of the guys that have to put that thing on, and they showed me their custom boots that they oh, have. Oh, they get everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Someone, time. They told me that custom someone, boots? someone offered them 20 grand to buy those because only Pistol Pete yeah. get those unique boots. I'm like, I'm not selling them. Well, listen to this. There's two of them, and I don't even know if I'm supposed to be saying this, but what, there's like two of them, and they go to like 400 events a year. Really? That's unbelievable. Four, like, it's like over 400 events a year. So what, Cosmos are like, what, 800 then? Well, I, I mean, I'm sure just as a mascot thing, I'm sure. But isn't it unbelievable? That, That's crazy. The commitment. Oh, my God. Is job. Is, in fact, there he is. Johnny on the spot. Oh, there he is. is. Come on, baby. Behind Come on. Us. Hey, look at, look at us. Look at us. Me and you. Me and you. Right here. Alan Bowen Check and Pistol Pete rocking. Let's have a We're pretty much twins. Boots. We're pretty much Pistol twins. Pete. We're pretty much those, twins. Those custom boots are legit. Yeah. Jeez. Yes. They look good. They look uh, good. Outstanding. <laughs> See you soon. The, ti- the timing Go of that folks. was fantastic. How about that? <laughs> All right. Uh, Alan, as we wrap up, 16-team conference. No Texas and Oklahoma is a mm-hmm. major headline for most college football friends around the country. But what does the Big 12 bring with 16 teams, even though they don't have Oklahoma and Texas this year? I think high, high competition. It's anybody's conference. I think it's cool. There's a lot of favorites in other conferences. But you look at the the Big 12 and who we have and everyone's here, I feel like anybody can win it. Five teams got a first great. place vote. Absolutely, which is I don't even know how many of any other conference had that. So I think it's fun. It'll be competitive. It'll be there'll be a different two teams and then hopefully big, well, hopefully Oklahoma State and maybe BYU or the, the Big 12 championship <laughs> for the foreseeable future would be nice. But just as a conference as a whole, I think it's in a really good spot. All he told us he wants a 99 rating in EA Sports. Where would you put your rating? Yeah, you know, 99 is crazy. I'll go 89, 90, 90. I'd like okay. to be around there. You know, I think there's room to grow. Absolutely. So I think year one kind of knocking the rust off, and year two it'll be able to change at the end I of the I just hope we can customize you and add Absolute. the Absolutely. It's new. It's new. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> Create a player if not. Create yeah, we'll, we'll have to call EA and say we need to throw a mustache on there. Oh, that's no awesome. question. Hey, Alan, we really enjoyed the conversation. Yeah. Thanks for stopping by, Absolutely. man. Absolutely. As That's painful as it was for BYU fans to watch yeah. the rally, I know that they respected you and Ollie, and we're cheering hard for you in the Big 12 Thanks championship so much. game. We wish you the best moving forward. Appreciate it, guys. Yeah, best of luck. Okay. Alan Bowman, quarterback of the Oklahoma State Cowboys. All right, now we switch our attention from Oklahoma State to Cincinnati, one of last year's newcomers along with BYU. Conversation with Cincinnati head coach Scott Satterfield on the way. This is... BYU Sports Nation at Big 12 Media Days. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Welcome back to Las Vegas and Allegiant Stadium. Big 12 Media Days continue on BYU Sports Nation. I am Spencer Linton, teamed up with former NFL and BYU wide receiver Austin Colley. Hey, Austin, listen, for what it's worth, not many guys here caught passes from Tom Brady and Peyton Manning, but you did both. I was blessed. I was very blessed. One of five. I'd like to add one of five. One, yeah. of, one of five. One Is of that five. Right? <laughs> okay. And we welcome in the head coach of Cincinnati football, who also has a long, distinguished resume, including 2019 ACC Coach of the Year. Scott Satterfield is with us now at Cincy, year two budding program. you got a lot of support from the boosters, and uh, everyone's excited about what your team's going to be able to do in year two. So with that backdrop, Coach, how do you feel like your team is different now that you head into year two of Big 12 football? 
Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, a lot of last year was you're learning a lot. You know, I, I was a new coach there at Cincinnati. You're trying to learn the players and learn, you know, every, how things work at Cincinnati. And then obviously, oh, you need to got to play in a new conference, Big 12. So we learned a lot last year. This year, we, um, you know, we have a new team, essentially. I mean, we have 48 new scholarship players that we brought in since December. So in this world of the portal and, and all the things that are going on, um, you know, we brought in our type of players, we thought. You know, number one, um, they're good players, but I think just great people. And, and you know, our, our whole – theme this whole offseason has been being connected like you know I want our players to be connected to play for each other um, so I think we got a you know a, a much different team that we're going to be putting out this fall we learned a lot last year about the big 12 and we're excited to attack this this year number two I don't think people understand fully frankly there are a lot of staffs that are still learning things about the transfer portal but what type of staff and support crew does it take to handle that many comings and goings on a football roster Man, it's it's hard. It's hard to keep all the names straight, I can tell you, you know. And, uh, <laughs> you know, we have a staff of, of around 8 to 10 in the recruiting department, you know, and we're talking social media people and video people, but also people are actually helping in the recruiting, evaluating film, you know, because you, you do. You have to recruit your players. You have to recruit the high school players and then obviously the portal. And, um, you know, we signed 21 high school players last December, 28, uh, 27 uh, portal guys. That's a lot of names. And um, as a head coach, I got to know all of them, you know, and, and, and you know, so, yeah, you have to have a great staff that all work together, pull in the same direction in order to, to pull this off. Um, you know, and then, and then you have, have to have a great strength coach staff in, in, this, in the off season to be able to bring the whole team together, you know, with, with the workouts and the runs and all the different things. So, you know, it's all coming together now. We're excited about here in about three weeks we'll start camp. So you mentioned the transfer portal. You had a lot of skill positions come in, one of them being Brendan uh, at QB, right? Yep. Brendan Soresby from Indiana. What did you see from him, and how has he been, at, been able to acclimate to the uh, – yeah, to the new team. Yeah, yeah you know, in the offseason, we were looking out there, you know, see if we could find a quarterback, and he was one that really stood out once he got in the portal, went and, you know, interviewed him and his family and got him on campus. He's a guy who started the last six games in Indiana um, and, and really did some great things, threw a lot of, lot of touchdowns, uh, threw for a lot of yards. He also can run. I mean, he's a guy, he's about 230 pounds. I mean, he's a big kid. Um, he's out of Texas, um, you know, the Dallas area. I love him because he brings everybody together, I like the whole team. You know, he's just got instant respect from his guys because he – he cares about him, um, but he's got great talent. I mean, he's got he can he's got a quick release. He can throw the football. Um, he can do it all, you know. And he's competing right now with um, you know one of the quarterbacks, Lichty, that came back from last year, and then we signed a true freshman that I think Samaj Jones, that I think's got a ton of talent out of Philly. So those three guys are competing. Um, but, but we all know, no matter what level you're in, you better have a quarterback and go out there and make it, you know, make it make it go. So no, no qu- question, no question. It's always nice to have a running game when you're trying to break in a new quarterback to help take some of that pressure off. And that's one thing that your team did do well last year, mm-hmm. top five team in mm-hmm. rushing yards in the country last year. So what's the plan moving forward with the, the run game is, again, you try and figure out who your next signal caller is going to be. Well, yeah, the, the, the beauty of this whole thing on offense, we got our top seven offensive linemen are back, you know, all five starters and then the two, two guys that were right there in the mix. So, we're, we can lean on the guys up front, and, and then Corey Connors, our 1,000-yard our rusher, he's back, um, you know, and, and we, we kind of transform a tight end room. We got a transfer from Ohio State, and Joe Royer is a Cincinnati kid who I think is the NFL tight ends. I mean, you know, I, I really believe um, that offensively we can obviously take that next step. We had, a, we had a powerful offense last year. Didn't score enough points, obviously, but I think the quarterback position is going to be the catalyst to make that happen. We do have a lot of uh, parts around the quarterback. Um, so, so he doesn't have to go out there and make it all happen. He just got to distribute the football in a manner, take care of the ball, uh, you know, and then and hopefully score more points this year. Is there a player? Is there a player that maybe not may not right now be on everybody's radar, but that you're super excited about? Yeah, I mean, I think there's we have several. I think you know, I mentioned Joe Royer as a tight end that that really you know played a little bit at Ohio State, but I, I think you know, he'll start for us at tight end. I think he'll be to me one of the better tight ends in the league. We got to be able to find ways to get him the ball. You know, six five, two hundred and sixty pound tight end that can move a little bit. Um, you know, defensively we bought Canteen here. He's a safety that came in from Virginia Tech. Um, you know, we we kind of re rehold our we revamped our whole secondary. You know, there's 12 new DBs we brought in back there. We gave up too many plays down the field, including to you guys last year. <laughs> uh, you know, so we had to revamp that secondary. So I, I think there will be some guys that were really um, that people will start to notice once the season starts on. It's going to be many. No BYU on the schedule this year yep. for Cincinnati. Uh, at some point, the Cougars will make a return trip uh, back into Ohio. But you like BYU? Picked 14th. Cougars picked 13th. Every, every team down there kind of wants to take a page out of what Neil Brown and West Virginia did last year when they were picked to finish dead last, and then now they're a top-five team. So 
What gives you hope that maybe you could make that leap like West Virginia did last year? Well, I think for us, it's the guys we got coming back. You know, we, we lost some guys in the portal, but we kept the, the main ones. You know, we kept the, the Luke Kendricks, the Corey Connors, um, Xavier Henderson, the receiver that we have. And the offensive line you just and, and all those guys. You know, so I think I, – I look back at West Virginia last year. I, I thought – they're going to have a chance to be pretty good because they had their whole O-line back. Yes. You know, I thought, okay, well, that's a good place to start, you know, and then they started reeling off some wins. Next thing you know, you got some confidence. And I think hopefully for us, with all these players we have returning, we have a new defensive coordinator in Tyson Vite that came in from Ohio, Iowa State who knows this league inside and out. Um, he, he has done a great job this offseason with our defense. I think that will help us. Um, but, but I think the returning players and what we added, you know, in that portal, I, I really believe that we'll be able to go out and, and make some noise this year in the Big 12. Talk to me about Dante Corleone. We know that he has some, you know, some yep. some medical uh, issues. What, uh, where's he at, and what can we expect from him? Yeah, you know, first of all, you know, our medical team has done an outstanding job identifying um, and attacking that that he what he's got going on. Well, he just started working back out last week, mm. um, so he's back with the team this week. Obviously, they worked out yesterday. I talked with our strength coach, and um, you know, he's doing he's doing great. You know, and I think we'll just you know lean on that medical advice and. Um, as we push forward, I mean, obviously the goal is for him to be out there playing with his team and, and, and playing at a high level. And I think that we'll be able to make that happen. Um, just, you know, I just want to give a lot of credit to our doctors and wow. our medical team for that, you know, because what he's going through. But but there's precedent. Guys have played through this, um, what he has. And then I, I think hopefully he'll be able to do that as well. We'll see. Now, correct me if I'm wrong. Like it was the blood clots, which mm-hmm. is a very serious issue. Yes. But it's, it, hopefully it's it's just been – just that is there anything else around no, that that that's what it is it's just that unfortunately for him you know you do all these other tests there's not there's nothing else wrong with it. his heart's good you know everything else in his body's good no other clots anywhere um so they they've got it isolated and and i think once they know that you actually know the problem you know what's happened now they're able to attack that and and be able to get through that so um you know he's in great spirits working hard and uh man we're excited to get to have him back with the team now working out we enjoyed talking with him last year beast to say oh, yeah. the <laughs> least up front uh, great personality scott satterfield is the head coach of cincinnati he's on byu sports nation i almost hesitate to ask this next question but i have to we've got a few people here that are like you need to ask coach satterfield about travis kelsey and taylor swift <laughs> <laughs> well you, you, you never a, get that question i mean right? he's yeah. a cincinnati alum. He is, he's, he the, he's arguably now the most famous cincinnati i know alum. i know yeah i mean i can't speak to taylor but i mean travis i've talked to and <laughs> <laughs> hung out with uh you know, Travis is, man, he, he's so full of passion and energy of whatever he does, you know, and, and him and his, his brother Jason came up and did a podcast back in uh, last spring, and, man, what it hit, sold out our basketball arena. And, Amazing. Oh, it was unbelievable, but they're so gracious, and they were so great. They talked to our team. Um, they love Cincinnati. Uh, they love the Bearcats, and um, I just love their energy. I, I love the fact how they, they went through some things, you know, both of them. I mean, Jason was a walk-on, and Travis was kicked off the team, and they, they yeah. both fought through all that. Yes. Became great. Great players at Cincinnati, and then went on to the NFL, and they're two of the best players ever to play at their position in the NFL. I, mean, I just love the how they overcame, you know, because we're all we all screw up, we all have some things that happen in our life that we always have to overcome, and I love that story and and where they are right now today. They just didn't give up, give in, quit. Mm-hmm. They kept fighting, and I, that's what I love. And I, hopefully, our team and our players will be able to, you know, have to take that example of how, how they're living their life. Help, helps helps having a brother, right? Be able oh, to man. Lean on. Yeah, there's no question about it. No, no doubt about that. And, uh, you know, they're great ambassadors for Cincinnati. Certainly when you talk to recruits, you know, you know you're going to be the next Kelsey, you know, whatever. And, and so, uh, but they, they're very supportive of our program and obviously want to see the Bearcats do well. Coach, we genuinely appreciate the time and, and wish you the best of luck. We know that Kalani Sataki has great respect yeah, for you. Like uh, love Kalani. He's awesome, yeah. awesome coach and great person. Yeah, well, he feels the same way about yeah. you. And, uh, again, we thank you for taking time with us today. Can't wait to watch Cincinnati Bearcat yeah. football this season. Yeah, appreciate yeah, you guys. Great to speak with you, Coach. Yep, all right. You got it. Scott Satterfield, the head coach of the Cincinnati Bearcats. Up next, we're going to hear from one of those Bearcat stars, running back Corey Kiner, who has next-level swag. Wait until you see what he showed up wearing at Big 12 Media Days. This is BYU Sports Nation. BYU Sports Nation at Big 12 Media Days in Las Vegas, Nevada from Allegiant Stadium. I'm Spencer Linton, teamed up with Austin Colley. Joining us now is 
talented Cincinnati running back Corey Kiner following up his head coach, Scott Satterfield. Corey, welcome to BYU Sports Nation. Appreciate you. Now, I mentioned before the break that people would be impressed with your outfit. You've got the 21 chain on. Your brown suit is on point. What people can't see is the shoes, Austin, I mean, the that shoes, he's rocking shoes, as well. The shoes are on another level. Yeah, explain. I mean, the chain, I mean, <laughs> you, you came to play. Yes, sir. You uh, came to play today. <laughs> yeah, so I had to get out of my cover zone a little bit. I don't usually get dressed. I'm no? More, I'm more of a Nike sweatsuit guy. But, okay. uh, you know, media day, Big 12 media day. Uh, you so, went all out, bro. Yeah, it's, a, it's an event that you got to come to impress. Statement. Yes, sir. I love it. We're going to try and get a camera around to show the shoes as no well. Question. I think Louis Vuitton showed up somewhere in the outfit, too. Did it not? Oh, yeah, everywhere. <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> Head to toe. LV. Uh, hey, respect. Yes, sir. Respect. Corey, uh, Cincinnati football coming off, in a word, a tough season, but ultra-motivated. We just heard from uh, your head coach. Why do you feel like Cincinnati's ready to take a significant step and get back to bowl eligibility and be a real contender in the Big 12? Um, I feel like we, we're ready to take that step. Our One of our main uh, objectives this offseason was complete program alignment, and I feel like we reached that step, uh, getting everybody, all the new guys, all the guys that were already here, just in line to become closer and realize that we all have the same goal, mm. and that's to take over the Big 12. Okay, so in a conference, arguably Big 12, probably the best running back stacked conference, what differentiates you from some of the other running backs in the league, right? We just talked to Ollie Gordon, right? It's expected to be maybe a Heisman hopeful. Um, you have uh, – who else we got? We got uh, uh, K-State, you oh, know, I mean, uh, they're, Neil, they're, right? Yeah, no, I mean, we're, Devin, we're, Neil, we're for stacked, sure. Kansas, right? there, there are several. So, yeah. Okay. So, so what, what, what separates you? Corey, from those guys, uh, I feel like I feel like I can do everything. Um, feel like I can lead. I can special teams, catching, blocking, all of it. I mean, those guys can do it too. Those are some great guys. Right, right, right answer. Corey, I like that. Yes, Corey Kiner is with us on BYU Sports Station. What do you think is the number one lesson you learned from year one of Big Twelve play? Number one lesson is um just we, we didn't have complete program alignment. So I feel like I learned to lead, like not just by um, example, but being more of a vocal leader. How are you a different running back right now than you were last year? Um, I worked on my speed a lot, a lot this offseason. That was my main emphasis. A lot of guys uh, said I was slow, which <laughs> wasn't the case. wasn't the case at all. Who's saying that? Uh, they know who they are. Okay. <laughs> it motivated you to say the least. Oh, yeah, yes, sir. Love okay. that. Love that. Okay, so tell me about uh, – you know, coming into year two, have you noticed a difference uh, being in the Big 12, the level of competition, the guys in the box, the defensive fronts, et cetera? I mean, is there anything that, stand, that stood out to you about being in the Big 12 as opposed to, to being in the conference before? Uh, the conference before, the guys weren't as big as the guys that we faced in the Big 12. But, um, I mean, it's football, so it's all the same. Okay. If you, you're going to line up behind seven offensive linemen that have significant experience. So what are you seeing from those guys in front of you that make you feel like Cincinnati is going to bring back another significant rushing attack? Because, again, that was one area where Cincinnati was very successful last year. You ran the ball really well, 217 yards per game in 2023. So why do you feel like you could – be even better behind those guys up front. Like you say, uh, all those guys are returning, and they all have a great mindset to come to work every day and lead. Uh, I just feel like they're all great leaders, and they all take their job very seriously. It makes my job a lot easier. Playing in Provo last year, what was one of the biggest surprises of playing in that stadium, playing against BYU? Uh, the fans were just so kind. Uh, after the game, they were saying good game. Just I don't know if I like that. <laughs> they were so kind. Like, I don't know usually, if I like that. Usually the fans are talking trash everywhere else, but, like, you guys didn't talk trash. We're just super nice. Yeah. What about well, the how was that? How was that? How was that emotionally for you? Like, like because it's a tough game. You lose. You're, But then the fans are nice. What was that like for you? Like, you know, after a game, you, like, you got a little bad emotions. You're mad walking off the field. But then when somebody walks up to you and be like, hey, 21, nice game. I appreciated you guys coming here. And I'm like. I just had, I had to smile. Like <laughs> I'm mad, but I'm like I'm like, thank you. <laughs> okay, true, true or false? True or false? I so I used to play at BYU, and I always heard rumors of. Do, do you get as the the uh, opposing team? Was there a bag of like nifty gifties, little toiletry bag for you guys, or is uh, that false? 
I think that's false. I, don't, I didn't see it, me personally. So there was not anything handed out? Because I think they did that some years. I don't know if they do it every year. Me personally, I don't, I don't know. Uh, pro- probably, but I don't know. I know, they gave the, I know they gave Cincinnati fans that showed up in Provo ice cream. Okay. Oh, really? I know that that's a that's a tradition. Oh, sure. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> maybe maybe we can get you. We, we're, we're notorious. We have a creamery notorious for some of the best ice cream. Maybe maybe we bring something like that back. Maybe a maybe a, a quart so of next time Corey Rocky counters Road. BYU in any capacity. What's your favorite ice cream flavor? Favorite, we'll take care favorite of favorite ice cream. I would say cookies and cream. Cookies and oh man, that's a, yeah, that's a staple. You will not be disappointed. That yeah. is for sure. Okay, EA Sports College Football Twenty Five has their setup just behind us. Are you? Do you buy into this? Like, are you are you excited about this? Are you a big video game guy? And and uh, if so, are you, are you going to play as yourself with Cincinnati? Of course, I'm a I'm a huge video game guy. That's all I do outside of football and working out. Uh, I love video games. So yeah, um, when the game comes out, I'm going to play play with myself. Okay, so are you dominating your teammates then in the locker room? Oh yeah. yeah. What what's what's uh, the go to game? What what do you compete with? Call of Duty. That's my game. That is, I am the best. Cod, you're a cod guy. Oh yeah, I'm the best Call of Duty player on the team, and I, st- <laughs> I stand behind it. What's your? Uh, are, do they do tiers in cod? They do tiers, tiers status, yeah. right? Yeah. So I haven't played in a couple weeks. So my uh, look, uh, my friends have had the chance to uh, level up above me. But like you know, when I get on the game, it, yeah. it's business. Do we do we have a, a streaming handle that you uh, that you use? So uh, on Twitch, I'm um, okay. King underscore C Ben C B A N D Z. Okay. Uh, I just started streaming, so uh, I'm trying to get big in that. Let's go. Love that. Let's go. I mean, you got you got to leverage the platform that you're on right now. <laughs> oh yeah, right. Yes, sir. In every way possible. Yeah. Yes, sir. Uh, okay. So t- t- tell me this: you go into the 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 NCAA 25 game, you see a rating, uh, let's say around. 80 where maybe you feel like you should probably be in the mid to high 90s yes sir and then you also see the graphic of you you've got no swag what are you most upset about are you most upset about the rating or like the lack of swag i'm gonna go with the lack of based on what i've got going on here i'm I'm gonna go off the lack of swag only thing that i care about as far as swag on the field they just gotta get my cleats right Uh, okay yeah i'm a cleat guy as far as like arm bands and all that other stuff that's not me Okay, uh, I'm, I'll come to the field about business. But okay, you're going, uh, you're going nothing. You're going nothing on, yeah. the, nothing on the arms. Yeah, nothing, nothing on, on the legs. Arms, nothing on the legs. Just give me my cleats that I wear. Visor. <laughs> yeah, uh, sometimes, sometimes, sometimes. Yeah, sometimes. It just depends. You switch it up. Yeah, I switch it up. That's a bold move. <laughs> yeah, yes, sir. Yes, That's sir. a bold move. Corey Kiner, the greatest college Call of Duty player on Cincinnati's football team as well. I, um, I'm gonna have to look up the handle, dude. <laughs> That's the thing. Tune into the support streets. this man on yes, Twitch is uh, for sure. No question. Corey, we appreciate you spending some time with us. Uh, genuine uh, congratulations on everything you've accomplished, and we wish you the best of success moving forward. Thanks for hanging out. Thank you, guys. I appreciate you having me. Yeah, man. Loved having you. Tune in tomorrow for more coverage from the Big 12 Football Media Day at Allegiant Stadium. Tomorrow at noon Eastern on BYU TV and BYU Radio. I can't believe that this show is almost over. It has flown by. What? Yeah. Uh, We'll put a bow on hour one of day one from Big 12 Football Media Days right after this on BYU Sports Days. Oh, Cosmo and Swoop going at it. Get him, Cosmo. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store. Official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Go to BYU Sports Nation YouTube page to find all of our interviews from the Big 12 Football Media Days with coaches and players from BYU and all the other Big 12 teams. Well, we're about an hour into our Big 12 Media Day coverage. Our question of the day, what are you looking forward to most about the two-day event here in Las Vegas. Our elite voice of the day presented by PAX Healthcare Elevated comes in from Michael Sorensen on X who says, I'm looking forward to seeing which announcements are coming, whether it's BYU scheduling a future home and road with a big-name program or Brett Yormark, the commissioner, announcing something for the Big 12. Will there be an official sponsor? Will it be the Allstate Conference? Will we learn anything about that? Like, all that's been out you're there. In good, you're in good hands with Allstate yeah, and well, the Big 12. Well, and frankly, like... The Big 12 for six months of the year, depending on the time in Arizona, is in four different time zones. Austin, so it could be the state conference, right? That 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 tracks. All that right, tracks. All right. I like that. Today's rise is shout out presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU athletics, and hands down, clearly it goes to my longtime co-host and colleague, BYU Sports Nation's Jerem Jordan and his wonderful wife Whitney, who together welcomed a new baby daughter last night, Paige Jordan. 
July 8th birthday, 1026 p.m., 8 pounds, 3 ounces, 20 and a half inches. Such an exciting time for the Jordan family. There is nothing like a new baby, Austin. I know you can appreciate that, too. you got four kids of your own, but Whitney is a warrior. She's awesome. Jerem, congratulations, man. Of course, we know that you wish you could be here, but clearly, family, baby, those are wonderful priorities, and we're so happy for both of you. Yeah, congrats to, to Paige and Jerem. What, what number is this for Jerem? It's number three, so it's no so longer man-to-man. Man. Yeah, he's, he's, going, he's going zone defense for sure. Yeah, the third uh, third's a big jump. <laughs> <laughs> There's been jump. Best of luck, Paige and Jerem. Hope you get some sleep. <laughs> That's the thing. Get get as much rest as you can. We love you both, um, and we love your kids, Venna and Tay. Hope they're enjoying uh, baby Paige as well. Such an exciting time. So so fun to see the other kids with the baby, yeah, too. Cute, perfect angel baby, Paige Jordan. Our thanks to today's guests, Ollie Gordon II and Alan Bowman of Oklahoma State. And from Cincinnati, head coach Scott Satterfield and their running back, Corey Kiner. The conversation continues 24-7 on X, Instagram, and Facebook. For Austin, I am Spencer. Big 12 Media Day's coverage continues online from Las Vegas.